Oh, what's up, everybody? Sober day number 333 here. We're so close to one year. So close. Uh, you know, what is that? Uh, 32 days away from 365. I'm super excited. I've already got my plan. Uh, me, the wife, and a few friends. Uh, and anybody who wants to join, we're going to go skydiving for one year sober. I am uh, getting more and more anxious and nervous about it as each day passes, but I'm super stoked about it. By the way, if it's your first time here, first time seeing one of my videos, um, you know, I started this back when uh, I was very, very early. Well, I'm still early in sobriety, but on like day seven, um, what I like to do here is kind of, you know, share some of my stories, uh, do sober things, do new things, uh, do some old things that I don't recall and remember doing as well because I was always drunk, drunk for most of my life. But today I want to kind of do something a little bit different. And we're going to get back into more of my stories. A lot of my stories, I got a lot of stories that I'm, I, I kind of got on the shelf right now just because as I still kind of am early in recovery, you know, reliving some of those stories, a little tough to tell. So we'll be getting back to some of those, but I figured I'd start doing some reaction videos to some other people that are drunk to kind of give you a little insight from how I know I would, not how I would react, but some of these situations I've been in, some of them are totally crazy I've never been in. Um, and some of them I just kind of have an a understanding of, of, of what might be going through the drunk person's head at the time. Um, and there's also a few that crept into this video that we're going to watch today that I'm not even sure if the person is drunk, but we'll talk about that as we go on. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it and uh, see some craziness. By the way, this video was done by Sergi322, somebody I subscribe to. Check out their channel. They got a pretty good channel. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. That's why I said I'm not sure if everybody's drunk. This looks more like an angry driver who decides just to plow into everybody's vehicle. You know, I uh, I was fortunate. I never got into an accident while drunk. Uh, thank God. By the grace of God, I never did. But, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of other drunk accidents, especially videos. I watch a lot of YouTube. And, uh, you know, usually, initially they kind of stop because there's that, that, quick thought of oh my god i just did something before they take off now this video might be pick it up because he's already done that he may have already hit something and now he's trying to flee the scene i don't know but let's keep let's finish watching it yeah everybody's doing the one thing i don't recommend if he is drunk uh i recommend just calling the police call the police right away they're more uh prepared to deal with situations like this Running up to a vehicle this size, if the guy is drunk or deranged or crazy or whatever it is, not the safest, smartest idea. Just call the police. Get his tag number like they're doing right there. Call the police. You know, you're just kind of putting yourself in danger. I think they do actually stop him, though. They bust the window out. Yeah, it looks like they got the, bus the window busted out now. That I, I just I don't recommend that. You're dealing with somebody who's drunk, not in the right state of mind. Uh, I mean, they just plow through. We just saw just in that video clip, uh, what, like five or six cars right right off the rip. So I, I recommend just calling the police and getting as far away from them as possible. You know, getting the police there is the quickest, the safest way to get a drunk driver stopped or clear off roads in case he does get back out on the road. That's what I would do. Now, this video, I've seen this one before. I'm pretty sure it's not the biker. I think it's the guy in the SUV who's drunk. Yeah, I'm almost positive it is. Now, I don't know if the biker already knows that he's drunk, but I would never, never, ever pass a drunk person. Stay behind them. If you pass them, you've now put yourself in harm's way because they can catch up to you. Plus, the speeds the, bikes, the guy on the bike's got to do to try to get away from the guy. You know, you're also just putting yourself at risk. Yep. There he is. Now, the biker runs the red light to try to get away from him. Now, remember, you're dealing with somebody who's drunk. <laughs> the guy is not, he doesn't care there's a red light. You just flipped him off, blew by him again. The drunk guy is just going to get enraged, in my opinion, and probably keep coming after you. He knows he's in the bigger vehicle. Which again does not make it right. By the way, nobody should drink and drive. Uh, uh, I am. I, I got very blessed that all I got was DWIs, and I'll take those. You know, being stopped by the police 
Thank God I never harmed nobody, never crashed. But um, one thing I do know is I was never in my right state of mind when I was driving. I always thought I knew what I was doing, but I also knew that I kind of wasn't in the right state of mind. So um, I remember there was one time I decided just to blow a red light. I didn't realize a cop was directly behind me. And come to find out, I was literally, it was late at night. I was done working and I was heading home. My house was like, when I say I was probably uh, three or four football fields away from my house, I'm not exaggerating. I could see my house. And it was a red light, middle of the night, nobody's there. And I decided to blow through it. Like I was stopped. I was like, why am I sitting here waiting for this? Right. And I blow through it. Cop was actually directly behind me. I was drunk, didn't see it. Got pulled over instantly. I remember just apologizing. I am so sorry. That cop actually luckily let me off if my wife was willing to come pick me up. And my wife had to walk with my daughter and come get me. And uh, I remember asking the cop, like, you, can't you just arrest me? Just take me in. And she's like, nope, you're going to go ahead and go home with your wife. And I was like, hey, I think I actually probably got more trouble that way than uh, I would have had I went to jail that night. Yeah, I think I have seen this one. I think the, I think the truck comes back or the Jeep comes back here. Yep. Then loses control and crashes. Think about it. That car right there, you see that car pulled off that way, realizing that there was a car coming. I mean, this guy could have killed the biker, could have killed uh, that car right there. Who only, God only knows who's in that car. Could be a family, could be a kid in the back seat. And, you know, all because of some road rage because you were a little drunk and got angry with a biker. Idiot. Now, at this point, in my honest opinion, if I'm the biker, I'm turning around and getting away from this guy as fast as possible. You, what the f were you thinking? If I remember correctly, I think, he does, I, th I think he comes back. I think the biker comes back. You I understand the biker's mad, but, like, let it go. Just get out of it at this point. You're dealing with a person who's not in the right state of mind. Just, Dude, just let it go. What the f By the way, Sergi322, thank you for already doing all the editing. And believe me, like I said, I'll give credit where credit's due. We'll go ahead and link the, um, the description to the original video below. Yeah, the biker goes back. I wouldn't do that. I'm just saying. I'm getting as far away from that as possible, calling the police and moving on. Oh. He he literally goes, you can't be doing eight miles an hour. I don't know how fast his bike's going, but sounds like he's going pretty fast, too. I understand he wants to get out of there, but now the guy's out of the vehicle at least. Call the cops, move on, drive away, get away safely, report it. Now, it looks like they've already come up on this guy. He's already had an axe. You can tell the tires are all busted out there. Never walk up to, I mean, maybe if you want, if you don't know at first, maybe. But they're walking up to a car. Looks like they kind of know he might be drunk already. Check it, check it. Just call the police. I don't know what they do in this country that they're in right now because I saw a different place on it. But you in the U.S., just call the cops. Right here, you're in a bad area. Watch what he does. I've seen this one. All those people could have just got hit right there. and There's not, nothing they would be able to do. Just get away. Call the police. It's not worth it to stand around and watch. Even if your car is there and you're trying to protect your car, what are you going to do? You can't protect your own car. Just get out of there. The faster you call somebody, like the police, the faster they can get there and try to get the guy off the road. All right, here's one I haven't seen before. I haven't seen this one. Looks like we got a bunch of bikers. Is it going to be a biker or is it going to be another, another a-hole in a car? Yeah, that's why I'm scared of bikes. I don't want to be on a bike. I had a bike for a summer. I got rid of it. Looks like they're all kind of surrounding this vehicle. This vehicle must have done something already to them before they started showing this clip. One thing, forget about drinking and driving for a second, just for a split second. Think of just the person who's drunk, right? If they're, they're already in the wrong. Like I said, just call the police. I, I can't say that enough. Get them off the road. It's the safest thing to do. But... We all know, we've all been at the bar, you've been somewhere, you've seen the drunk person who gets angry. They get angry like this, right? Zero to 100 real fast, you know? So trying to, whether they the, the guy's already done something, 
trying to antagonize him a little bit, in my opinion. Wrong thing. So all you're going to do is aggravate him. And you guys are on motorcycles. It's not going to end well, or potentially it can't end well, um, when he's in a 4,000-pound SUV and you're on a bike that, I don't even know what bike's weighing, like what, 800 pounds at best? Remember, drunk people get angry quick. You know, you, you've lost control of some of your emotions. That's why you see a lot of drunk people crying. Uh, I was a crier at towards the end stages of getting uh, sober early in recovery. Let's see how does this end? Looks like he's trying to run bikers off the road. Video cut out for a little bit. It looks like they got somebody with them in a car too. He's mad. Now you're dealing with a crazy drunk guy. Drunk guy, I don't care. He's going to try to fight everybody. Yeah, that, this ain't good. Guy's lucky all the bikers are a little more calm and civil. He could just beat the crap out of that guy. Five minutes later. See? He said he got his license plates. Five minutes later, guy's being arrested for DUI. Now, having, so, having been somebody who's dealt with uh, DWIs, yeah, they're not fun. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's highly illegal to drink and drive. Um, I don't advocate for it at all. As a matter of fact, I'm ashamed of all the drunk driving I did over the years. And, again, I, 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 I feel very blessed that I never hurt nobody. Um, that's just being lucky. Uh, it's, I wasn't a skilled drunk driver. Not one of the people that would be like, hey, I was, I was a better driver when I was drunk. No, I just, by luck and the grace of God, I never hurt nobody. And uh, I don't know if I could live with myself if I did. So that's something to think about. If you're somebody who thinks it's okay to toss a few back while you're at work or after work and then go ahead and drive home, know that you're driving a, you know, four to 6,000 pound missile, essentially, um, you know, hitting somebody head on. You hear about it all the time. The drunk driver always survives, and the innocent people in the opposite vehicle usually are the ones that die, and that's because uh, I think they say uh, when you're drunk, you're kind of more limp, and you can't because you can't react, you don't stiffen up, and, and somehow that helps in a crash. But, you know, don't do it, especially in today's age. Just order an Uber. That's what I wish I did on my last one. Yeah. Let's get back into it. All right, this looks like the old famous falling asleep at the wheel at the light. I did this once. Got woken up by a cop knocking on my window. It, it was actually so much like, the, remember the movie Super Troopers, where they uh, they just pull away? I'll, I'll tell the story in a second, but let's see if that's what this is. Bro. Yeah, looks like they woke him up. Oh, he's asleep. He just kind of came off the brake or the or he got on the gas a little bit. It's up now. But see how the police are a little bit more trained to deal with this? They're going to put a vehicle. I bet you they're going to put a vehicle in front of that now to block that vehicle from going forward. You Actually, wanna... they're not doing that yet. They're, usually they, they will. But at yeah, least at him, least at least they're getting off traffic. Yep, there it goes. They're blocking him now. See? Make sure he can't go anywhere. That's scary. Like, that happens, guys. It only happened to me one time in my life. I fell asleep at a red light, and I got a knock on my window, and it was uh, Austin uh, City Cop, and he woke me up and told me to pull into a parking lot. And the reason why I say it was like the movie Super Troopers is because I was like, oh, man, I'm busted. You know, I'm going to get a DWI here. I pull into the parking lot, and I'm waiting for the cop pulling behind me, and the cop's nowhere to be seen. And uh, I sit there for a second. I'm like, huh? I get out of my car, I walk around, I'm like, am I crazy, right? He must have got a call, and he must have legitimately thought because it was late that I, I had fallen asleep. Um, but I was drunk, and uh, 
I took it as a sign. I sat there in the parking lot and uh, slept for about, I don't know, maybe like an hour or two, and then I, I went home. I was probably still drunk, probably still shouldn't have drove, but uh, I did try to sleep it off. But falling asleep at a red light, if you don't think it can happen to you, it can. Like, alcohol is a depressant. It'll put you right out. Especially, a lot of people don't realize this. You pass out once you stop drinking. It's not while you're drinking. You usually pass out once you stop or slow down the drinking process. He's strong. He's Mine is out of here. Ooh. Is this a drunk driver or an angry driver? I don't know. You hear about these road rage incidents all the time or, or retaliation instances. This guy could just be very mad. We'll find out. Oh, no, I think he's drunk. Sounds like he's slurring. All right, here's one I've never seen before, too. Is this a, is this a civilian dash cam or is this a police dash cam? Oh, my gosh. What's he doing? Oh, okay. Oof. Oof. Oh, he hit something and kept going. And then comes to a stop. I don't know if this is a cop or if this is just a regular person. See, I wouldn't pass him like that truck's doing. Stay behind. Stay behind the drunk driver. Um, I think you're a little safer because they're going to try to probably go forward. Uh, they usually don't try to go backwards unless somebody gets in front of them uh, in a lot of the videos I've seen. Again, I've never been in that situation where I've crashed and uh, had to go ahead and and do anything. Although I will tell you, on my second DWI, I did get two flat tires. I ran over something in the road, and I went ahead and just pulled over. I did try to drive for about a mile. I remember that, about a mile, because uh, it happened on the on-ramp. And for about a mile, I, tried, I was like, oh, I could drive. I thought it was like one flat, maybe. I get out, I see it's two flats. I only had one spare, so I called the tow truck. Um, but my first instinct was kind of to see how far I go. Again, that's drunk thinking. It's not rational thinking. I like the music with this one. Oh, they're in a van. I hope that I hope they don't got kids in the car with them. Ran right through the stop sign. They're all over the road. They're missing everything. They're getting lucky right now. Person walking across the street. That person's just walking across the street right now. More people. Holy hell. Now, I'm hoping this person is recording. It has at least called the police already or somebody has. Um, you know. Filming them isn't going to do anything. They've already, it's already been enough witnesses, and they probably tagged a few things, so there might be evidence already. Ooh, oncoming traffic, everything. I will say one thing, and I, 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 I'm not vouching for that person, but uh, there are videos that I found online uh, before that uh, people that go into, like, diabetic shock, uh, they, they act like or they, they kind of have the same symptoms as if they're drunk. And uh, usually drunk drivers don't swerve so much back and forth like that. I just wonder if that person was maybe having some type of medical condition, uh, which is just as dangerous. Uh, but at least the medical condition is legal. You you haven't broken the law. Something's happening to you. Uh, I don't know. I just that was a lot of a lot of way back and forth, like totally out of it. You know, usually, usually just what I've seen of all the videos I've seen. You know, usually drunk drivers kind of somewhat are trying to keep driving. Mean, that person was just all over the road and missing people. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, what's going on in this? Oh, they've hit something. They're riding on the rims. Still trying to go. 
Like I told you, I had the two flat tires. I thought it was only one. I tried to drive for about a mile. Uh, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know if I was. I really don't remember if I was thinking I could get to an exit or something like that, but uh, or if I was thinking I could drive home. But let's see. Let's see how far this person makes it. Oh, the rim's not even. They've been driving for a while. That rim is wore down. They look, like they, they look like they're doing like 40 or 50 still, too. Jeez. Again, it might seem like great footage to get, but don't get this close to somebody who's who's clearly uh, drunk or deranged or anything. Kerala, a Maruti Swift crashed into a pole while the driver was attempting some novice driving stunt. Is this drunk driving or just stupidity driving? The driver spent half an hour on this busy stretch of the road trying to do drifts and sudden braking. He then crashed into the pole when he attempted a drift. He was driving under the influence of alcohol and has been arrested. Oh, okay, he was drunk. Okay, drunk and arrested. <laughs> Made his own little race course right on the public street. Jeez. Oh, that's it right there. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. Like I said, it's uh, Surgery322. Find him on YouTube. You know, I don't advocate, you know, drunk driving. Uh, I never did, even when I did it, you know, when I was still drinking. I was never happy with myself when I woke up the next day. And I assume most people who drink and drive aren't thrilled with themselves the next day. A lot of times you wake up and it's more, oh, my God, how did I get here? And it's more fear involved. Um, that does not by any means give anybody an excuse to do it. Uh, again, I was very blessed. Uh, I'll take my DWIs uh, and my my record from it. Uh, over hurting anybody because it, you know in the end I got lucky where I only hurt myself legally it cost me money money's replaceable lives aren't guys don't drink a drive uber lyft I'm sure there's probably gonna be another one anytime soon now just take those home if you don't have uber lyft in your area call a friend walk you know uh walking I I know people uh friends of mine they literally they won't drink a drive they they live like five six miles from the bar they go to and they will just walk home you know a drunk stroll in the middle of the night uh, could also be dangerous, but at least you're only putting yourself at risk. You put yourself in that situation. Don't put others at risk. Don't drive the five, six thousand pound vehicle, which is essentially just a missile. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed my take on this video. Again, by no means am I advocating drinking and driving. I don't think anybody should ever do it. Um, I just want to kind of give you my take on watching some videos here of other people that have done it. Um, as being somebody who's been in that situation myself, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, like this video and comment down below what you think of some of those people. Comment, too, about that one. I told you. There was just that one in there that I feel like might not have been a drunk driver. Might have been the uh, like, like some type of medical condition just because of how they're all over the road like that. You see all the other drunk people, it, they were very, they were doing things very directly um, or, you know, trying to focus or intentionally doing things. Uh, that person was either very, very intoxicated, but I think they would have hit something. Uh, I felt like they might have been having a medical condition. If you've ever seen that video or if you know where the original video came from for that, comment below. Let me know. Guys, I'll see you next time. And as always, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.